Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in April. Reading wise I've had a pretty mixed month but mostly good and I read some horror, some thrillers, a bit of true crime and a short story collection. And I even had my first five star book of the year so that's exciting. I started off the month with Blood Rubies by Axel Young. This is a pseudonym of Michael McDowell who wrote The Elementals and other horror novels and this one has a fantastic cover although unfortunately this particular copy is a bit battered. But anyway I got this sometime last year and have really been wanting to read it but for whatever reason haven't actually picked it up until now. This tells the story of two twin sisters who are separated at birth. One gets adopted into a working class family and the father is abusive and this sister wants to become a nun. That is what she decides at quite a young age and that is basically the focus of her life. And the other sister is taken into a very wealthy family and she grows up very privileged. She seems to have it all. She does great at school, she has loads of friends, she doesn't want for anything. So we learn more about each sister individually and neither of them knows the other exists and eventually they cross paths and come together and it didn't turn out in any way how I thought the story was going to turn out but it was still really interesting and I did find it quite slow at times. Uh, sometimes the story felt a bit drawn out and repetitive somewhat but saying that I was never bored it's really well written and the characters are fantastic there wasn't quite as much horror in here as I expected but it is quite dark in places and I did really like how it came together and how it ended up it was yeah not what I was expecting but it was really good um, I wasn't blown away by it though, I did enjoy it but I didn't love it and I gave it 3 stars out of 5. And as a side note, if you saw my thrift haul or whatever when I shared this when I bought it, um, you'll have seen this already but if not I'm going to show you now. It has this hilarious inscription in the front that says, too shaggy on your birthday, have fun and don't do anything I wouldn't do, bonehead. So yeah, I'm glad to have this particular unique copy. Next up I read Our Kind of Cruelty by Araminta Hall. This is a new release thriller that came out in April and I got a copy from NetGalley and I was intrigued by this, the title looked interesting and then I saw that it had a quote from Gillian Flynn which says this is simply one of the nastiest and most disturbing thrillers I've read in years. In short I loved it right down to the utterly chilling final line. So after reading that I was like okay I'm gonna have to read this and check it out for myself and I personally didn't find it particularly nasty or disturbing and it was okay, I enjoyed it somewhat but it wasn't nearly as good as I hoped it would be. This is about a couple called Mike and Verity and they have been in a relationship for some years and they have a sex game that they like to play which wasn't nearly as crazy as I thought it was going to be from reading the premise but anyway as the story goes on we find out that they're not actually together anymore and Verity is engaged to someone else and they're due to get married very soon but Mike is still under the impression that this is just all part of their game and that Verity still loves him and that they're going to get back together and they were meant for each other. So is it all part of a game or is Mike delusional? There were definitely some shades of American Psycho in here because Mike comes across as a sociopath and he works in finance although in the UK rather than the US and the music is more Oasis than Phil Collins but there were some similarities there. This book was pretty well written and the story was somewhat intriguing. There were definitely times when it was compelling and I really wanted to find out what was happening 
but other times it felt quite drawn out and slow and I was just kind of getting through it in order to finish it. By the end I just kind of found it underwhelming and forgettable so overall I gave it three stars. It was okay but I didn't love it. Next up I listened to an audiobook. This was American Fire by Monica Hesse and it's a true crime story. This is about a string of arsons that took place in rural Virginia and it's all about what happened and how they found who did it and why they did it and it was a somewhat interesting story but I feel like I would have rather just read an article about it. I don't really feel there was enough there to sustain a whole book about it and I don't feel I really got any more out of the book than I necessarily would have done just reading an article about it. So overall I gave it two stars out of five. It does have good ratings though so clearly a lot of people did like it more than I did. Next up I read A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. This is a horror novel about a demon possession or a supposed demon possession and this was a very mixed bag for me. The story was definitely interesting but I think the execution didn't quite work for me. This tells the story of a family, husband and wife and two daughters. One is eight and called Mary and one is 14 called Marjorie. Marjorie starts exhibiting some strange behaviour and after taking her to various doctors they can't figure out what's wrong with her and then they start to wonder if she is possessed by a demon and so they start looking into an exorcism. Alongside from this we find out that the father has recently lost his job and they're not doing very well financially so when a reality TV company wants to have the exorcism be part of a TV show they decide to say yes they don't really know what else to do plus they need the money and this is told from the perspective of the younger sister Mary but some years after this all took place there are also blog posts throughout the novel which break it up and kind of feed us information in a different way which I thought was quite interesting but the voice of that blogger was incredibly annoying I didn't like it at all so overall I thought the strengths of this book were the characters, I thought they were fantastic, I really liked the family dynamic and their interaction, especially the two sisters, I thought they were very well written and that was really the strength of the book for me. Um, the weaknesses I felt were the story itself unfortunately, I feel like it was very derivative, like he reels off a string of references and it made me think, just because you wear those references on your sleeve, does that make it okay to rip them off? Like, I felt this went past homage stage and into rip-off territory. If anyone else has read this, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts because I've seen some reviews of this online and people seem to love it. It seems to be a booktube favourite and I've not really heard anyone say much about these influences and inspirations other than oh there's a nod to the exorcist, there's a nod to we have always lived in the castle. I personally felt it was much more than nods and that was one of the reasons I didn't like it because I just didn't think it was very original and this was April's pick for my horror book club and we all took different things from it which was interesting and the ending is somewhat ambiguous and we were kind of split about 50-50 between what we thought may or may not have happened at the end so that was really interesting and was really great to discuss. We all hated the blog posts though. So I'm glad I read this one, it's been on my list for quite a while and I've heard really great things about it. It didn't quite hit the mark for me unfortunately, I ended up giving it three stars out of five. Next up I read You by Caroline Kepnes. This is a thriller about a stalker and again this is one I've heard a lot about and has been on my list for ages, finally got around to it and I listened to the audiobook version which was great, I thought the narrator was fantastic. So this is about a guy called Joe who works in a bookstore in New York and he meets a girl who he becomes obsessed with and he ends up stalking her and following her every move and 
reading her emails and stuff like that and it's all told from his perspective and this is just a really great thriller. I thought it was really well written, the characters were great. It did get a little bit drawn out at times, I feel it could have been edited down slightly but for the most part it moved pretty fast and was just a great read. There was also quite a lot of really dark humour in here which I wasn't expecting but I really enjoyed. So yeah, this one was thoroughly enjoyable, really well written and I gave it 4 stars out of 5. Next up I read a short story collection called You Think It, I'll Say It by Curtis Sittenfeld. This is more of a contemporary literary fiction collection and I've read most of her other novels and really enjoyed them, especially Prep. So when I saw she had something new coming out in April, I really wanted to check it out and I got a copy from NetGalley. So this is a collection of short stories all about people and their relationships with other people, whether that be significant others or family or co-workers and it's just so well written. She is really an incredible writer and her characters are amazing. They're just so realistic and well-rounded and yeah, I just can't talk about her writing highly enough. So this was a great short story collection that I just read a bit of here and there throughout the month and yeah, I would highly recommend it. I gave it four stars out of five. Now onto my five star book of the month, When Darkness Loves Us by Elizabeth Engstrom. As it says, this is two chilling tales. The first one is called When Darkness Loves Us and it was just hands down amazing. It is about a teenage girl, she has just recently got married and got pregnant and she and her husband are starting their life together, they're building a house together near her parents place and one day she goes exploring on their land and she ends up going into this underground tunnel which she used to play in as a kid but hasn't been to in years and she gets trapped in there and it's terrifying and she's pregnant and she's down there for a really long time and it is so horrible and heartbreaking and insane and I absolutely loved it. I want to read it again already. It is pretty short, it's only about 80 pages long and yeah, it was everything I wanted and more, so highly recommend that one if you can check it out. The second story is called Beauty Is and it's about twice as long as the first one and it is more developed I think and there are more characters to that story and there are more elements going on in that story. Again, it's very well written, the characters are all fantastic and it had quite an interesting story. It's about a couple who have a daughter, she is born without a nose and the father instantly rejects her, calls her a monster and as the child grows up they realise that she has learning difficulties and this just enforces the father's viewpoint on the child and he wants nothing to do with her, he hates her. So the child grows up with this horrible relationship with her father but her mother is very loving and her mother is also a healer. She has some kind of power that she's able to heal others of injuries and ailments and the story is told from different perspectives. One is some time ago following the parents and their initial life together before they have the baby and then going through time as they get older with their child and the other part of the story is told from Martha, the girl, her point of view in the present day. She's now middle-aged and both of her parents have died so she is now on her own and she starts coming out of her shell a lot more and her intelligence is growing and she's meeting people um, but with that comes some downsides as well as the plus sides. I didn't connect with this story as much as I did the first one but it was still really well written and I'm really glad I have this book uh, with both stories in it. This was originally published in 1985 and 
yeah, it's one of those kind of forgotten gems, I think, that really needs more recognition than it currently has. So yeah, I love this. I'm so glad I tracked down a copy and I gave it five stars out of five. And then just to finish off the month, I read a little bit more of the new annotated Dracula. And yeah, I'm enjoying this. I have just got to uh, Mina's first section. So yeah, I'm not too far through, but yeah, I'm enjoying the reread. So that was everything I read in April. I hope you all had a great month reading wise or otherwise. Let me know if you've read any of these and let me know what you thought. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!